Okay, now we're going to discuss one of the most powerful parts of tunes, um, which is the schematic. Um, so before I start, I'm just going to pull out the schematic, and I'm just going to rearrange my workspace. Um, I would generally prefer to create a specific room for this, but for the moment I will just work under organizing things. I'm just going to get rid of the level palettes. Okay. So this over here is our schematic view. Schematic view is actually two different views. If you click right at the bottom of the corner of the schematic, you will see that it changes. The one is the scene and how the scene is organized and the other is the output from the scene and how the scene is rendered and this in particular is one of the places where OpenTunes is incredibly strong and is as good as just about any other 2D animation platform on the market what we also have over here are three buttons. The first is a peg. Now a peg is basically a placeholder, basically is a position and you can use it to reposition objects in your scene and you can use it to organize subcomponents to make them more logical as a graph and you can use it as a way of controlling animation without changing the drawings themselves. The second one is a camera. If you want to add extra cameras to the scene, we click on this button. The third one which is not something I'm going to go into in this video, I will do a video f dedicated to it, is the motion path. The motion path basically allows you to have a curve and you can use that curve to control the movement of objects within the scene. Just delete both of these. To delete, you would basically use edit and delete over here. I have just to set a short, shortcut key for delete there. Um, then over here, we have various ways of reorganizing the graph or changing how the graph looks. So the first one will basically expand all your columns so you can see what is on the columns. You can also do this by clicking on the various icons up here. The arrow expands the image of what is on the column. The yellow block renders the column and the orange one basically is used to show what is displayable in the viewport. This is basically the yellow is the same as the yellow in the X sheet and the orange is the same as the orange in the X sheet. Then the others are all various options to manipulate the viewport. We've got fit to window, focus on current which will basically move the column on the X sheet which you're in to the center of the view. Um, then we have ways of reorganizing the nodes. The scene that we've got basically contains this drawing over here and what I've done with this drawing is I have cut it into various sections 
which I am then going to do animation with. Um, we're going to do cutout animation with these in a couple of forms, basically to explain how the relationships work with the schematic. So, your first way of doing cut out with the schematic would be to organize a rig with pegs. You have a parent peg which would parent everything, then you could have a peg which would peg the torso, and then another peg for the upper arm. Another peg for the forearm. And a peg for the hand. All the pegs are basically linked red dot to blue dot. And just organize this a little bit. And you can create a hierarchy like this. And then use the pegs to animate the object where you will move each peg's center. to the object center just like that And then what you would do for animation in this system would be to animate the rotation of the pegs. With cutout you are usually animating rotation and very little else. and you would generally animate rotation with pegs in this kind of system and the advantage with working with pegs this way is that the animation is not fundamentally part of the drawing but is kept separately on the pegs which I will now just delete to go through the next form of animation. Next form of animation is to do with this over here which is the bone system. Now the bone tool does not have to be used to set up bones. The bone tool basically just organizes these nodes in schematic and it organizes them directly so what we will first do is we'll get our torso and we will just set its center on the drawing itself and our upper arm just Forearm, and our hand. Okay. 
then what we would do with the bone tool is you would connect them in reverse order. So what you are going to do is you are going to connect the upper arm to the chest. So you're just going to drag that and it's going to link the drawings. What you'll see in the schematic basically just puts them into a hierarchy. You can actually create these links purely by linking the nodes themselves. You'll see that the skeleton is created that way. To manipulate the skeleton you have two systems to manipulate it. You have the animate which is going to allow you to animate specific drawings. And you are going to get your inverse kinematics. Now with the inverse kinematics you will see a blue square over here. That defines how the chain is going to be affected. So inverse kinematics will allow you to control the entire chain, but it will depend on where the blue dot is as to which part of the chain you are manipulating. So the static parts of the chain will be determined by where that dot is. So we're just going to do a short animation. We're just going to select all the frames over here and drag them down a few frames. Then I'm just going to key all those frames in frame 1. Or keyed. Then I'm just going to go down to the end and we'll just going to be particularly spectacular but now what we do with cutout is we will exchange drawings to give different forms of motion so I've got a little animation here for the hand which I'm just going to bring in and basically just a roughed out animation and just going to retime it a bit and we'll have there. Okay. Then the other thing which you will want to do is you will want to be able to attach objects to you want to be able to attach objects to parts of your rig. For example, you may want characters holding things or things 
which are worn by characters, kind of hats, clothing, um, which you will want to link to them. In this case, we're just going to link something to the hand. So what we will do is we will use the hook tool and we will make sure we have the hand selected tool and we will just place a hook with the hand. And that should follow where we want it to be. up um, and we're going to have a another little rough out piece of animation over here and we're just going to have that follow where the hook is to the hand. In order to get to see the hook I'm just going to refresh this by just expanding them and closing them. And you'll see a another red dot appears underneath the hand node. And that is the hook. And in order to get the object to follow it, I'm just going to link it to the hook. Look. And so I can now retime this. Just drag it down. And I will just retime it a little bit. So now we're going to take a look at the effects part of the schematic. Um, so we're just going to click on this button down here and move us to the effects. And we are going to change this from a black lump into something a little bit more interesting. If you right click you'll get a list of nodes that you can add to the effects. Um, and there are a lot of effects here. and most of the, of the effects filters are reasonably good. What we are going to do with this effect is just going to take a color card. Color card basically will give us a solid color and a color card will show up as a column. Um, so we're going to take a color card going to extend that over there um, and I'm just going to click on the render and what you'll see is the screen goes green. Um, we are then going to use that little rough as a mat. So we are going to take the color card and we're going to put that into the source. 
I'm going to put the drawing into the mat and then we're going to plug that into the X sheet and what you'll see is we now have changed the color of that drawing. Let's change the color card to something more appropriate. This kind of effect. And then we will take a blur. We're going to blur this All of these effects are animatable. You'll see that they have a key icon where you can animate them. Some of them, like this one, have a slider beneath it, but that slider is not particularly noticeable. And at the bottom we have a preview where you can preview how the effect will look. In this case I'm just going to up the value of that blur. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light effect, which is a glow, and we're going to add a glow to this, and we're going to mix the two together um, by using Over node, which we'll find soon. Um, over node. Um, you've got multiple different ways of blending layers. Um, the over node is pretty straightforward in that it will just put one over the other, um, and we will just put a over the blur and have something which produces a bit more of an effect. Effects can be layered and you can continue layering effects for incredibly complicated effects um, rather than something simple like this um, but that would be way more than I can cover in just this video